Hey, everybody, what's happening? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. It is the month of December. Happy holidays to all you uh, festivious people out there. Um, we've got a great show for you today. I love that word. <laughs> it's not even a real word. It's like mischievous. 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 It's like you're trying to say Sly Cooper and the mischievous raccoonus. That's exactly what I was going for. My name's Will. This is Jeremiah. Hello. This is Nine. That was very deep. <laughs> A lot of meeting. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, some PS4 ports, uh, some Chrono Trigger information, more Fallout 4, Rock Band, Game Awards, all that kind of stuff. So we'll get into that for you today. Let's get into our first segments. Uh, PS4 is apparently porting Beyond Two Souls and mm -hmm. Heavy Rain, I guess on a one disc? More than likely. Yeah. Yeah, but the disc isn't available until later. <laughs> until March. Yeah. Yeah. And then Beyond Two Souls is coming out before Heavy Rain. Right. So now these games or really kind of, when Heavy Rain came out actually, I don't know how many games were before it, but when Heavy Rain came out, I felt like this was one of the ones that truly captured next generation next generation game where you had to make moral decisions which had later affected the game the story writing was good some really cool development uh, going on in, in that title uh, you guys have played these games I played through most of heavy rain I haven't finished it. what, what do you what did you think of that I, mean, I loved it I yeah. thought it was great it was different it was a totally different approach to right. you know I gameplay went all, I went all the way through it uh, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was a great game. The controls were a little wonky, but it was. But the it premise. About the, control. the premise itself. It's about yeah, the story. The game, and the it was a visceral experience. You were exactly. brought into it. You be. It was all based on everything that you did, and it was neat. It was more of a, you know, a movie than just a game. Sure. Right. Uh, Beyond Two Souls kind of followed that up, and they actually introduced. Uh, you mentioned the movie. They got Willem Dafoe's in there and Ellen, Ellen Page. Page. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm all for that, by the way. I love the fact that. Oh yeah, and it's happening more and more yeah. and more. I mean, with budgets of games now. I, I feel like it's just more and more <laughs> credibility and clout for the gaming industry when these actors are saying, "Yes, I want to sign me up for that." Right. right? I'm going to put time but and energy and effort into this. At the same time, does that detract from a player's experience? I don't, if it's because done if right. they do it for the main character and you can associate who that person is, it kind of, for me, would take away that I'm I, part I, of the game. I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I say no if it's done right, because these guys are, are pro professional, uh, you know, actors and actresses, and, you know, if they, they're professionals, right? So this is what they do. If they can make a game better or draw out more emotion of a certain part than what somebody with no experience can. Yeah. Then, I just know. don't ever want to see it for a main character. I'd rather see it for just the additional characters sure well I, I like the custom kind of I'm not feel I'm saying me. don't distract from the game whatsoever right you're, you're just simply right. you know adding that that element of professionalism if you will sure. I and I mean there's a right way and a wrong way to do anything okay I mean <laughs> it's very profound <laughs> <laughs> by the way you're watching and listening to press start TV I'm will this is nine yep. This is Gage. I'm sorry. This is Jeremiah. <laughs> I'm Jeremiah. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. good. It's, everything's fine. All right. So Jeremiah. So I mean, you played through Beyond Two Souls as well. What did you think of that title? I thought that Quantic Dream definitely they knew what they did wrong and what they did right with Heavy Rain. So they put a lot of that into Beyond Two Souls. Um, and then Until Dawn has followed that up with, right? So yeah, I was kind of. Did you, you haven't played that one yet, have you? No, I haven't. Okay. That wasn't Quantic Dream, though. No, that was, but that was the same games, idea. And in my yeah. opinion, was far better than both of those. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah, you because thought that was Because Until was Dawn was a. I was genuinely pleased with how everything that's was done. Basically, you know, an so. interactive slasher film, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. That's that, exactly it, what it is. And it is done so well. All right, so we can go on and on about this, but uh, that, those games were so well done that they're making them and porting them. They're coming out in March, and, and there you go. And Detroit on top of that. Oh, that looks, looks great. Awesome. Detroit looks great. Look up the trailer for that. Um, apparently, uh, there's a Chrono Trigger-inspired PS4 and PS Vita game that has been in development right now that really nobody's really talking about right now. I don't know why. That's because I'm waiting for Square Enix to send them a cease and desist. Yeah, oh, yeah? Because any any type of Chrono Trigger spinoff in the past has gotten a DMCA. I remember the, the PS2 two. one. That one looked really cool. They got cool. shut down. So, so there's, a, there's a lot of uh, companies out there that make like um, old retro games, <coughs> package them, and they're like the next iteration of a game, like right. Zelda. 
Um, so Several all, people have gotten shut down. The only one that they can't do or haven't been able to get through is that one. Yep. It's pretty interesting. Because it's such a huge impact on the gaming industry. They, they just shut that it down That is my all-time favorite RPG. Yeah. Hands down. All right, uh, so let's talk about some Fallout 4, uh, a little bit of this. This this game, once again, is, is amazing. And um, I think next week we're going to be doing our Game of the Year uh, announcements um, for genres and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that game will be in that conversation, so look out for that next week. But last week we talked about Fallout 4 mods and that kind of thing, but the character creation, some people spent like 20, 30 hours on these I've seen a lot of really good ones. Char There's some good ones. There are some good ones out there. 20, you can play for a day, I mean, two or three or four playing sessions and not have even started the game. That happened to me. I actually spent more time in the first week tweaking my character than I did walking around the wasteland. It's true. It's a true statement. Unbelievable. A couple hours a I've day. I'm back and re, re go re like retweak him because once he starts talking to people, his eyes you might have been a little, little scrunchy. Little things you don't like or, his, about it. or his mouth was too far forward, and I'm like, <laughs> if I gotta look at this guy for four or five hundred hours, it's gonna be the guy that right. I want to look it's at. I mean, right. four or five hundred hours. That's the kind of gameplay. You that's get the kind of gameplay you get out of these games. That's the same, man. Oh yeah. But some people, I mean, if you go online, look at some of these characters. It's like. There's some pretty cool Dude, stuff. The Louis C.K. one is awesome. <laughs> it is so awesome. I've seen Bruce Willis, oh, which was uh, really, really good. Taylor Swift and Conway. The Taylor Conway. Swift one was really yeah. good. Like it was almost eerie. Yeah. Um, I can't do it. And then Hank Hill. Have you seen that? Oh, one? Yeah. That one was really good. Um, Bart Simpson was I'm looking for the okay. hardware. Department. They just couldn't get the right the hair. Hardware. The hardware. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for some tap and die and some WD-40, sorry. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Alright, when we get back, we're going to be talking about music games and that whole genre right after this. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we were talking about all kinds of cool stuff with Chrono Trigger Fallout and Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain and, and the last segment. So now we're going to talk about music games. Music games. Um, uh, first of all, again, my name's Will. This is Nine. Yo. This is Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> hey. Um, so, music games. You guys. I mean, what is the the current state of this thing? So, uh, Rock Band Four has come out. Guitar Hero mm -hmm. has come out. Uh, apparently, just announced uh, Rock Band uh, is going to have a new patch, a huge patch in December, which basically includes Rock Band Three and a bunch of other stuff. So that's pretty cool. That's cool. That is cool. That's the thing, though. At this point, with the the whole music thing, it's just cool. It's kind of. Can you neat. use the keytar still? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the keyboard. I don't even know if I still have. I, I mean, haven't played any of them. I haven't really even done a lot of research. I on them. I, I enjoyed Rock Band when it came out, and then I just kind of like, it slowly died out. It, yeah. It's not that it's not fun. It's just, all right, it was a thing, and now everybody's past it. But now they're trying to make it a thing again. And nobody wants it to be a thing. I don't think it's definitely not as big as it uh, was before. Nowhere near as big as what no. it was before. I don't even know why they did the whole combo kits and everything. They probably wasted a ton of I money. I think on it. that's why. I think people are don't want to deal with the peripheral. <laughs> <laughs> They're just taking up space. They take up a lot of space. And man. you know they don't. They just don't want to do it. But on the other hand. If you can get it set up right and you have the space to do it and right, you get four absolutely. people together, yeah, it's, it's a blast. It's a blast. It oh, is it's blast. great for parties. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. We have a blast with it at parties. But it's but old news. Outside of parties, yeah. I would never, ever play it. So, like, that's, that's I guess, the, the purpose of what we're talking about. What is the current state of these music games? I mean, Guitar Hero came out with a new guitar, six buttons. You could do chords, a different playing experience. Yeah, um, six buttons across two rows. It's three and three. Three and three. And three. Yeah. yeah. So. So, so, yeah, but a different kind of element uh, gets you the idea of actually playing a chord on a guitar and that kind of thing but uh, of course you have the drum drum kits and and that kind of thing people can still sing obviously blah 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 so uh, then there's like rocksmith which tries to take it to the next level those some people really got into that seems like a pretty niche it was definitely a niche thing definitely absolutely it's crowd oh, more from, like your educational crowd. from what I heard it was cool you know, yeah, for the people that, that sat down, it. they got the real guitar, they plugged it in, they started at lesson one and just went. They were like, yeah, it was good, it was a good experience, I learned how to play, I learned a lot of things. Even people that knew how to play guitar still 
kind of went in there and you know they might have skipped around a little bit but they still got something out of it I think the biggest thing behind these these music games is the music I mean obviously people listen to music they love music I love music we all love music most people love music um, I just thought of somebody said I don't really listen to music the other day I was just like well most that's just anyway uh, so you've got your favorite band or artist or whatever so how do we take this genre and take it to the next level I mean how do we get people interested again. I thought what Rock Band did with the Rock Band Network and the store was really was cool. Rock Band 3? Yeah, where yeah. you could, they, they opened it up to individual and ind independent developers to create, create their, their own, own songs, songs and stuff like that. Out. And yeah. I got a lot more out of it because there were some more indie type bands and specific Less, things. Lesser known bands that, I was that able you to play. and I would listen to versus right. the general public. So it was more of an individual experience for me, so I got a lot more out of it that way. By the way, you're watching listen to Press Start TV. I'm Will, this is Nine. Yep. This is Jeremiah. Hello. Uh, we're talking about music games. I mean, that was actually one of the things that I really loved about all the first three Guitar Heroes was listening to the stuff that I'd never heard before and then actually really enjoying those songs and getting into that. It was cool yeah. when they brought you into something that you hadn't heard before. <clears throat> a lot of people had never heard Dragon Force before Guitar <laughs> Hero. Dragon Force. <laughs> and now everybody like hates Dragon Force. <laughs> I love that song Hero. though. I love that song. Free the Fire and Flame. It's such a great song. <laughs> I've seen Dragon Force live a couple of times. They're pretty cool, man. Yeah, they're I love good. Dragon Force. Yeah. I, I, love, a good show. I love them before Guitar Hero came yep. out. See, I, I didn't even know of them until I played that song. I was like, what is this madness? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like, it's like 3%. <laughs> you can never, like, most people haven't heard anything past the first, the first 15 first, seconds of that yeah. song. Well, you gotta play, sort of throw the towel in. I, I will say, I could, I play on Expert, I could not get through the beginning no. on Expert. Yeah, play on hard and get through it, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it on a, anyway, um, a lot of good experiences there. So, I mean, there are some good memories, some memories, but it but again, how do we get the people to go back into these games? I don't know. It's it's yeah. a really hard question. I it's can't answer. It's a really it. difficult topic because it's not. There's no way to predict how people are going to react to these kind of games. Because I mean, it's not really doing. It's not breaking any records or anything no. this time around. I haven't really heard or read anything about it specifically, where it's like this. This it's happening. Then it's rock band or Guitar Hero. I mean, what about just making? Um, uh, allowing people to put their own songs up there and trans transport. Well, that's what them. I was going to say. Is like if you could upload your own music and build your own custom tracks like, for it, like your own band, kind of. Yeah. No, or, like or music something. you have. Well, well that's like what I'm you saying, know, yeah. like digital albums that you have. Upload it to Rock. Oh, band, okay. Yeah, and sure. then you could like build generate your own the chords generated for, codes, chords for that the drums cool. and everything. That I think would take off like wildfire. I also think if you're an original band. And you that, can put yeah, your I mean, stuff on there. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. And put it on a marketplace or something. There you go. There's some ideas to take that to the next level. But, I mean, uh, I, I really have some, some good memories of, of those games. I mean, playing, just switching the instruments out, mm -hmm. you know, getting four people together. It's some of the fun. tournaments are pretty funny. I mean, we went to one, E3 There's one year. There's some people that get into that stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, man. That yeah, was PAX. All PAX, PAX. The, the, the rock band competition every year. <laughs> Uh, fun, fun stuff. So anyway, check those games out. Rock Band 4, Guitar Hero, Out Now, whichever one you prefer. They're both great. Um, and Rocksmith, I don't know if... I don't know if they... I think they have... I are, think they made one... Are they going to do more of that? or? I don't know. Because then you'll spend more money on the actual guitars and then the actual... Because there's like... What was this? There was a pro something? Those kits? The drum kits? Oh, yeah. The pro kits for uh, Rock Band. They're like... They're yeah, like they're a real mini drum kit. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, you could use it without the game. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we'll have uh, some more information about the state of the video game industry, which you have to hear right after this. Hello. Welcome, uh, Welcome back. Um, we're just talking about music games and the awesomeness that is music games and some great ideas from us, uh, patent and pending, so enjoy that. Uh, the game award, the state of the video game industry, now this is obviously a large topic and before we get started, you're watching and listening to Press Start TV, I'm Will, this is Jeremiah. Hi. It's Nine. Yo. All right, so the state of things. My phone is not on silent. That's you got okay. a trophy. Hell, hooray! <laughs> the interrupting the live, <laughs> the filming of a show trophy. Um, so, 
the state of the video game industry, yeah, there, there's a game awards that's coming out um, <coughs> within its second year. Uh, this is now the second year of the game awards. It's on Spike TV. It's a huge you deal. Think this is the second year? This is a sophomore year, yeah. Um, no. Yeah. The Spike TV game awards have been around for years. So this is the, the second year year um i guess they're doing music musical guests and all oh, this Jesus. kind of thing there's becoming Maybe more, the second more year of since they rebooted it but it's been around for years because i used to watch this at home at my parents house 10 years ago according to the press release it says it's only the sophomore year i don't know we'll you go back leave everything you read on the internet it. man no nah, i'm just talking about it so because <laughs> they've had neil patrick harris on it three years ago so, so that that's kind of what i'm getting at i mean uh, the, the, that's becoming more and more of a thing once, there was a uh, jackson hosted it once there there's a uh, the second year <laughs> I'll have to go back and check exactly what it was. Maybe it's the second year for musical guests. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. But there, it's becoming more and more of a show mm -hmm. um, and more and more of a deal, uh, which is great. So, um, you know, video games obviously is a massive, huge business, multi-billion dollar industry. And now, um, uh, Joey, Dr. Joey G, we were talking about uh, eSports is on the rise. Uh, you see... These award shows that are coming out, appreciating the people that are in the industry and the things that are happening, so it's picking up more and more nat like global recognition for the people that aren't into games. Now they see it as an actual thing, like the music industry mm -hmm. or like the film industry. And now there's the gaming industry. I, I, you know, I like the idea of having an actual global award show. I don't think. Not the bash on Spike at all, but I don't think Spike is the place to do that. No, but the it's BAFTA just... awards are more legitimate than what these awards kind of are, because these are awards that are more like Teen Choice Awards. That's basically sure. what it is. People vote on it. I'm surprised people don't get slimed. Right. And, I mean, <laughs> it, it, they've been voting on these so things funky. for years now, and <laughs> they started out strong when they started years and years ago, and then it kind of like got to this chaos. That nobody liked and everybody thought was a joke and then they rebooted it and they made it worse so I, I think we need to set up an actual awards group yeah that picks these awards and hands them out kind of like the you know like the, the academy the, the academy the, the who AMAs, would they be? the the cmas the oscars the Emmys, all that within stuff. the industry well, I mean, every we, major entertainment <laughs> aside from video games has an official awards group that sits down and decides these things. There's like the there's the ESA. There's the, um, the Entertainment Software Alliance. Yeah, there's the. That's a ratings board. Right. I mean, so you can use like the ESRB. I'm seeing people that are unbiased uh, towards a particular well, developer or publisher or what have you. Right. People, I mean, we need to set up an industry standard. Right. For these kind of things and have a group of people that are unbiased. Right. Organize and pick, not let the fans pick. Right. That's just what I was just call duty all the time, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I mean so that would be great. I mean, I, I'm just m my point was that just the state of the industry as a whole. Mine's real passionate about this. Yeah, sure, I mean, which is great. I mean, I, I think that again, uh, having that game show or, or, or not something that's a little more reputable for the industry, and then you know the ongoing growth of esports as a whole. The gaming industry as a whole is just um, on the rise. But what do you think, in your opinion, the state of the industry is right now? Are we in a good place or are we in... I think we're hitting that peak where it's going to start tipping off the other side. Yeah, it's more of a business now than anything because else. Because it's no longer about making things for fans, for developers. I mean, there are some developers out there that do it just for the fans. Bethesda is a good choice. They don't release games every year because they need to make money they release games when they're done because they want to you know keep the fans happy and then you get developers like EA and Activision who are cranking out the same game every year just to make money I think uh, we're seeing a lot of that with Assassin's Creed now I think it's Assassin's hit its Creed, stride Call of Duty I mean there's still cool games but man, man I'm just done with I it mean, oh, yeah. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed in four years so it gets pretty good but uh, yeah I mean I see that point I mean yeah, I mean, people just cranking them out just because a, a series is ongoing. Or you can spend a little bit more time, like a Bethesda, and on one of your key franchises and make it great. You know? Awesome. Make it fantastic. Uh, but yeah, you know, Rockstar, so, too. So, yeah. I mean, the, Grand Theft Auto takes years to come out between the each. The gamer generation. suffers, I guess, in, in, that, in, most, in some cases. What, waiting for a game to come out? Um, no, I mean, just when they keep cranking stuff. When they, yeah, just when oh, the yeah. yearly if, franchises. If they just do an annualized like franchise, yeah. we suffer big time. And, and Jeremiah, what's, what's your thought? How, how is the state of things in your opinion? 
I think that we're seeing a lot of big innovations now because we're not really as limited by software and hardware as we once were. Right. So yeah. the sky's basically the limit when it comes to developing a game and making a game come together, but it's almost like people have too many choices. So they just kind of focus on what their focus groups say or what yeah. We talked be about that on. Uh, on the last Checkpoint podcast. You guys should check that out because that was a great conversation. I mean, how do you go back to simplifying things like in having those great experiences in the old NES games and stuff like that? But now, like you said, because of technology, you could be, you could think of whatever and, and, and get there. You and know? plus, you know, there, there's the Unreal Engine and the Frostbite Engine and stuff like that where you, you just tell it what to do. You don't have to make anything anymore. Right. You plug in what parameters you want and it builds it and does it for you. Yeah. And then soon soon to be Oculus and Morpheus and you know all that we'll see where that takes us. Uh, who knows? I think that's why I really <clears throat> am looking forward to No Man's Sky. Yeah. Because there's so, so many so different. It's yeah. so different. It's like I still don't even know. All right. Well time it, so. it remains to be seen. Um, again you can check us out check out all of our content on pressstarttv.com. Uh, thank you so much for joining us as always. Until next time we'll see you. Later.